Item Number SCP-7559 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures Until SCP-7559 is sufficiently understood, priority directive is identification and isolation of cases through use of endoscopy on currently contained SCP-7559 hosts. SCP-7559 hosts are to be housed in standard humanoid containment cells in Site-183 and monitored routinely by medical staff for signs of sepsis. Radioscope trackers are to be added to their diets to assist in the identification and retrieval of further linked hosts. Description SCP-7559 are wormholes enclosed within muscular sphincters that spontaneously appear within living humans. These wormholes are stable and range from 2 micrometers to 25 centimeters in diameter at the widest part, and are seamlessly integrated into the surrounding tissue. SCP-7559 sphincters usually only link to instances inside of other human hosts. This often leads to complications when bodily fluids from one host travels into another, with one notable case involving stomach acid from one host leaching into the cervical lymph nodes of another host. Extended study of SCP-7559 hosts has revealed that after 6-8 to eight weeks post-7559 manifestation, SCP-7559 sphincters widen into surrounding tissue and are capable of transferring organs either in part or in whole to other hosts. To date, none of these transfers have triggered organ rejection in the recipient or loss of bodily function in the donor, even in extreme cases such as three hosts of different blood types all being connected via SCP-7559 instances in the renal veins. Addendum 7559.1 On August 14, 2023, an SCP-7559 sphincter widened enough to subsume part of the cerebral cortex, essentially moving it midway between two hosts. One host, Sarah Linares, was rendered comatose, while the other one, Jaden Jorgensen, reported symptoms of hallucinations and sleep paralysis to medical staff. Interviewed Jaden Jorgensen Interviewer Dr. Monique Velasquez. Begin log. Hello, Jaden. Please tell me what's been happening. It's everything, ma'am. My stomach has been gurgling for two days now. My hands keep going numb. It's really hard to piss, and I've got this killer headache now, right behind my eyes. My eyes are all messed up, man. How so? I know it sounds weird, but I can't see the, uh, warm colors anymore. Reds and pinks and oranges are super muted now, which kind of makes everything bluish now. Hard to describe. The main thing I wanted to tell you guys is about the visions, though. I'm kind of hoping it's the medication. Maybe we could switch it out? Note, SCP-7559 instances are often given placebo pills and are told they were medications for ulcers, benign tumors, or immune disorders. Of course, I can see about switching them after we're done here. Please describe the visions in as much detail as you can, though. Okay, so throughout most of the day, I keep seeing things in the corner of my eye. You know, like when there's a moth flying around and you can't quite see where it went? Mostly small things, like a bed that's definitely not mine. One time it was like having long hair falling down and covering my eyes. I'm fucking bald, man. That is definitely concerning. How long have these been occurring? Uh, the last two, three days or so. They've kind of slowed down, though. The pitch of Jorgensen's voice rises an octave and adopts an Irish accent. Footnote 1. The voice does not match any currently known host. Wait, wait, God, there's something stuck in me throat. Jorgensen continues to make choking noises for 20 seconds. Notably, his body and neck remain perfectly still for this period. When the noises subside, his voice returns to its original state. Who's there? Who's where? Sorry, I zoned out for a bit there. What was I saying? Jaden, I think we're going to need to run a few more tests to figure out what's causing these symptoms, but... A new SCP-7559 instance appears to manifest in Jorgensen's left tear duct accompanied by a dull tearing sound. Immediately, approximately 4.5 meters of an abnormally bloated small intestine protrude through the sphincter and spill onto the table. Dr. Velasquez hits the emergency button and requests medical team. Jaden, can you hear me? Jorgensen vomits up one lobe of a lung and collapses onto the floor. Medical team arrives. End log. Closing statement, Jorgensen was pronounced dead after 12 minutes.
The other host, known to be linked to Jorgensen, Sarah Linares, had nearly died simultaneously when an SCP-7559 instance drained away her cerebrospinal fluid, but managed to be stabilized. Dissection of Jorgensen's cadaver yielded three intact SCP-7559 instances, which were individually preserved in vats. Removal of a fourth was attempted, but during the procedure, the attending surgeon, Dr. Moreno, brushed the inner lining of the SCP-7559 instance and it closed abruptly, severing two of the surgeon's fingers. Dr. Moreno was placed under observation, and manifested an SCP-7559 instance inside his brachial artery 29 hours later. One of his fingers was recovered in the aorta of a host already in containment. The other has not yet been found. Addendum 7559.2 The number of contained hosts has surpassed 500. Additionally, 46 hosts whose nervous systems have threaded through SCP-7559 instances now report similar hallucinations to Jorgensen's. Endoscopic explorations through other SCP-7559 instances present in these hosts has led to inconclusive results. All explorations thread through human flesh for a distance of over 200 meters before terminating at an indifferentiated slurry of bodily fluids and membranes. Touching the slurry with the probe often causes unrelated SCP-7559 hosts to bleed from various orifices. Further testing is pending approval. Thank you everyone so much for watching, and a huge thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon. Special shout out to Everborn, Joe Light, The Bone Man, Brody Hartman, Rubbishbin69, and Doomsday LLC, Prince, and Design. If you'd like to help support the channel, head on over to patreon.com slash drmaxwell. Link in the description.